The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks for starting your trading day off right here. And what do we got, folks? Uh, check your glasses. Check the binoculars. We got red across the board right now. S&Ps trading down 18 points yesterday. We were chopping around. You talk about an acceleration. We got some earnings going on. We'll jump over to those in a moment. But right now, you got markets in negative territory with the S&Ps down about 18 points, trading at 45.96. You see that volatility. We were just about 46.08 as of 7 a.m. this morning. As I mentioned, we got some numbers coming up. You get the NASDAQ off 72 points this morning. The Dow off by 94 and the Russell off by 10. Russell still trading above 2,000. How about crude yesterday? Accelerates to 82 bucks on the dot. Our man Basil Chapman, he loves those round numbers. $82 on the dot. We've trailed off a bit. We're trading at 81.16 right now. You got gold. Trading lower by $25 to 1983. Got to jump over to the dollar index, right? Talk about some dollar strength, man. So what do we got today? We got dollar strength. We got higher yields coming at you, okay? It's so interesting, the market that we find ourselves in, man, because what's been the consensus, right? Consensus has been wrong for some time. We're talking about a 10-year yield right now at 4.02%. What happened to the Fed pausing and that being, and listen, we're only what? Not even a week past that meeting that we just had where the Fed hiked on last Wednesday. It's just Tuesday right now, okay? All things in context, I understand. But we are seeing higher yields. We're seeing a stronger dollar. We're seeing that weighing on commodities. And meanwhile, the market is just chopping around at 4,600 right now. So much of the growth on these companies, whether you talk about revenue, you talk about earnings, what is gonna happen when they can't raise prices by 10%, right? Jump to a company like Procter & Gamble, I'm jumping around a bit, but boy, they had their numbers on Friday, strong numbers because they're raising prices. They're raising prices 10% one year, they're raising it 10% the next year, they're raising it 7% the year after that. And meanwhile, gotta go back five years to get COVID, which is pretty remarkable. Company like Procter & Gamble, they get away with raising their prices 10%, 10%, and 7%. Now, they have to pay higher costs, which is why they're raising them, okay? But they're also bringing a lot of that money to the bottom line. And yes, their stock is up, okay? Yes. Now, let's back it up even further for some context. We hit a low in 2018 of about $70. And I'm cherry-picking some equities here, man. But as I go through some of these equities, and you talk about somebody, you know, sound companies relying on earnings, right? We're trading at 156. We came into COVID at about 127. Folks, they just jacked their prices 10%, 10%, 7%. You're talking about we are almost four years past that price point, okay? What happens when they can't raise the prices? That's the point. We're going to find out, man. That's a segue to uh, the article from the journal. I want to kick the program. Excuse me. Bloomberg, Wall Street economists are looking at September. Nope, that's not the one I wanted. Where are we? Here we go. Thank you. Earnings season threatens lofty stocks. Investors say optimism in markets could evaporate if profits get squeezed further. It's not happening yet, and I'm not so sure it's going to happen this season, man, but it's going to be interesting as we go out a quarter or two, right? What's the consensus? They are talking about maybe we start getting hikes somewhere. In, ah, excuse me, hikes. Got to get it out of my vocabulary, man. Maybe we get some cuts. The word cut going to come back into your vocabulary. Maybe we get some as you go towards the beginning of next year. What's going to be so interesting, the last quarter of this year, as in October, November, December, right? The last quarter of this year going to be especially interesting, I feel like, because that is when the student loan repayments begin. And you talk about a vacuum sucking money out of the economy, man. Tens of millions of people are basically going to have three to five hundred dollars, if not even more, on many occasions added immediately that is taken away from their disposable income. And in most cases, it's probably not disposable income that is taken away from, right? It's probably taken away from income that a lot of which is not disposable. 
And so how do they make those decisions? Where do they pair back? Maybe all the disposable income goes away. Consumer spending, I'm not sure. We find out that begins October 1st. Three to six months is not that long. So we see where we go from there. Uh, the earnings have been strong so far, though, man. Consensus, consensus estimates for the S&P 500 quarterly earnings, year-over-year -year change. You got Q3 versus Q4. Q4, we got some lofty numbers, man, in terms of where we're at, right? Check it out. 10%, 8% across the board, man. 7% uh, year-over-year decline in earnings for the second quarter. That's where they are. We had some lofty numbers, to say the least, man. So we get to find out. We're going through earnings seasons. We got some strong numbers today to kick things off, though. Let's talk about Uber. Why not? Post the first operating profit as ridership hits a new record. GA General Accepted Accounting Principles operating profit, $326 million. And their CFO... Nelson Chai, not familiar, but guess what? He probably, uh, that's probably a, an opportune time, right? He's achieved that goal, chief financial officer. They have operating profits, GAAP standards, second quarter operating profit, 326 million, free cash flow, that's a decent number, 1.14 billion. The markets are barely in the pre-market, but a lot of optimism priced in. And this is a great example when you jump over to a company like Uber, okay? We're barely positive, but guess what? We just doubled this year. Uber is up 100% since January, man, from 25 bucks to 50. That's simple math, folks. There's your action on their numbers. We're up to 52.73. We've paired some of those gains. We're back to 49.91. I mean, it's a lesson in terms of where we've been. The writing was on the wall their last earnings season. It looks like they go from 30 bucks straight up to 50. They deliver that first operating profit. They come in and the market says, hum ho, we knew it was coming. We're trading basically flat on their numbers. Now, Uber, they had a $3.80 move priced in. So that is a lot of volatility, man, for a company that's going to open about 40 pennies from where we closed last night. But as we know, sometimes where, uh, where supply equals demand, when the market's open, we'll see if it starts moving from there. So they had a driver shortage that caused fares and wait times to increase. The number of active drivers up 33% in the second quarter compared to a year ago. Number of trips taken increased 26% from a year earlier to a record high. That is a remarkable number, man, right? Think about it. A year ago, August 2022, and the world was wide back open, folks, okay? Um, so they had quite a surge in ridership, 26% from a year earlier, crazy, man. And there's their profit, right? You talk about some huge losses when they were coming in, man, especially during COVID, uh, everything dried up. Yeah, gross bookings, 34 to 35 billion in the current quarter is what they're looking for, man. Wow, yeah. And then they're talking about EBITDA earnings, about a billion dollars, both above forecasts. Pretty remarkable. And that company is going to open at 50. But boy, the first quarter that you have profitability, right? You don't even trade higher because guess what? It's baked into the prices, man. So we'll see where we go from there. S&P is a little bit of negative action to kick things off. We're trading right now at 45.98. Notes and bonds. Keep your eye on it, man. That is quite a move from 111.16. We just got a 110 handle. The low of last Friday was 110.25. And on a daily basis, you are chopping around at the lows of lower price, higher yield with the 10-year sitting above 4% right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll talk some markets. We'll take a look at some of the other equities with their numbers this morning. We'll talk to Jeff Blue. We'll talk some others. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off 17 points right now, trading just under 4,600. We're still a stone's throw away from those all-time highs, man, of about 4,800. You're only 200 points away. Boy, when this market can run, it can run. We got two months until a Fed meeting. We get jobs numbers on Friday, man. We get some economic numbers with earnings before that. Jumping back to Uber for a second. So as I mentioned, quite a run. This equity, positive in the pre-market, but decent numbers. The one thing that did weigh on them, uh, the freight unit. It's amazing how many components of this business they have. Great CEO running it. Um, Dario, what did he run? How do, you, how do you pronounce that name? Let's see. He's up here somewhere. All right. We'll get to him. Uh, nonetheless, what I was going to say is their freight, it accounts for less than a quarter of the total revenue. But think about it. That's, that's, that's approaching 20 25%, okay? Bookings and sales tumbled 30% in the quarter. Category-wide headwinds. Spot rates seasonally weak a trend it expects to continue in the near term. So yes, that unit, their freight unit, accounts for less than a quarter of total revenue. It's just an extreme number still. Now, they go from there, okay? You talk about the food delivery business? Check it out. Uber Eats generated $3.06 billion in revenue, slightly below Wall Street's estimates. And that is not how many that's not the value of orders they're doing that is their share of the revenue three billion dollars in 90 days ebitda of 329 million as the unit benefit benefited from advertising within the app now my perspective is okay is that as the economy potentially tightens here be careful on those numbers if you're an uber fan man and uber's a great company they're going to be around forever optimism high expectations very high as well and it's tough to achieve those multiples sometimes as you just went up a hundred percent okay but it is a good company but my perspective on these food numbers okay customers seem to have been undeterred by higher prices for food with delivery frequency of four monthly orders per an eater up 8% from a year earlier. So they're matching what you're talking about. Total revenue, 9.2 million during the period that narrowly missed the 9.3 that the market was looking for. Now, that is a luxury, folks. Don't confuse the two, right? You have their ride-hailing business is 
a necessity, a staple. You need a car. Many people use Uber, especially younger people. Uh, if they don't have a car, you're not going to need a car. I was having a conversation with our man Basil Chapman yesterday, even talking about uh, kids. So Tommy's two and a half tomorrow, folks. Two and a half tomorrow on the day. Two and a half tomorrow. And so he's going to get his license if they still exist in 14 years. Okay, Now, they'll probably still exist if I had to wager one way or the other. But imagine where ride hailing is. Imagine where self-driving vehicles are. Imagine where they are in the year 2038, 2037. You might not need them. Self-driving cars are coming at some point. That is So that's a necessity, right? The food delivery business, man, it is expensive, okay? I used to order this stuff all the time, and I feel like I'm lighting money on fire when I order it right now. And listen, you know, you got a busy night, you got a long day, you want a luxury, you want to treat yourself, you want food getting delivered at home, that makes sense, okay? But ordering it all the time, just so you don't have to jump in the car and go do a pickup order instead, percentages on percentages add up, right? What's the food bill went up in the last two to three years, 20%? Well, let's say you have a $50 bill on a food delivery business. If it goes up by just 20%, that means it's $60. Now you have a 10% charge charge on Uber. Well, that charge just went from instead of $5 on the 50, now it's $6. Add more percentages. Point being, folks, it seems like it's at a level that's excessive, okay? And I used to order Instacart as well, same deal, man. Grocery prices went up, percentages on ride, uh, food delivery, whatever it be, have gone up. The tip goes up from there. You end up spending 40 or $50 in a heartbeat, man. I remember about a year ago, I ordered Chipotle from, I think Uber Eats? And I think I ordered two burritos and the whole thing was like $46 to get delivered. I said, that's not okay. Not going to do that one again. And listen, I love Uber, but I'm giving you both sides of it, man. I'm surprised that the food delivery business has held up so well. Uh, freight is going to be a problem there. But guess what? The core of their business, yeah. Uber accounted for 74% of U.S. consumer rideshare sales at the end of June. Lyft had 26%. Lyft's in trouble, man. Shares slid less than 1% in the pre-market. How do you compete when you're that far behind, right? That's the tough part, man. How do you compete? When you're that far behind, you take a look at Lyft. Now, Lyft, yeah, they're up from eight bucks to twelve seventy one. It's been quite a run, but check out the five year chart on Lyft. Okay, Lyft goes public at eighty eight bucks, and they're basically chopping around near lows. You check out that same chart on Uber, and Uber's actually above where it was trading at in May of twenty nineteen. Now they both went public. Look at May of twenty nineteen. Uber goes public. Lyft went ahead of them, I believe. Yeah, March of twenty nineteen. So they go ahead, they get all the optimism and they sell off a bit, okay? They come into COVID and sell off even further. So it was a one-way trip from $90 and pretty remarkable they push it out right before COVID, right? But back that up to Uber as well. Uber does as well, but check it out, man. You have Uber trading above where it was in its IPO month, just off the highs, and you have Lyft, Trading well below uh, from the price of 88, even if you cherry pick this 50, 60 bucks this thing was chopping around at. And I remember saying during the time, listen, you know, these companies are getting punished, but if you're doing both of them, Lyft made some tough decisions. Maybe they should have went for the food delivery business like Uber did. Maybe they should have went a little harder. Maybe they should have spent some money during that time to shore up that business because, yes, they're more domestic. Okay, Uber is very international. Lyft was more domestic. That's why you caught a real acceleration here from $23 up to about 68. That was all on the optimism that domestically, right? America was opening. You still had some problems with Europe, et cetera, but America was wide open. Uber not able to operate internationally as COVID was still in other countries, more so America, right? The vaccines took hold. There was your first vaccine acceleration when the world began to to 221. No, yeah, I had to recalibrate my band. That was that was the COVID sell-off, right? And this was the vaccine. The promise, the vaccine starts getting delivered February, March, because Tommy was born. Yeah, I got to my head. Yeah, February of 2021. And that's where the vaccines were just becoming available in March and April in America. So there was optimism there, more so domestically, that Lyft took off. But boy, I mean, I, Uber is a 
verb in the English language, right? You say, let's Uber to the party, let's Uber home. Hey, uh, we'll Uber there. That way we don't have to drive. Nobody says, let's lift. You want to lift home? You know, it's a big problem, man, when they're that far behind. And I'm not sure how, how you catch up at this point. And the holy grail, of course, of these companies, as they say, is self-driving vehicles. The one thing I want to caution you there, yes, that's obviously going to be beneficial, okay? But that's a different world, and I'm not even sure that Uber wants that world right now because they don't have to buy vehicles, right? They get people to drive their own vehicles. When they have self-driving cars, they're going to have to have a fleet of vehicles. But guess what? The moment that they can have a fleet of vehicles, who else is going to have a fleet of vehicles? Whoever is making those cars. Like who? Tesla, right? If, if Uber has a fleet of self-driving Teslas, you know Tesla's going to have it. What if they have a fleet of self-driving Fords? Why doesn't Ford have it? Right, so keep that one in mind. Nonetheless, Uber shares actually lower now by a few pennies. We're coming back for the open, folks. Markets in red territory. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. Attention traders. Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought after newsletter, Fibonacci 24 seven, a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P right now, negative by 16 points, trading at 4598. A little bit of a sell off coming into the opening bell from about midnight, right? You're up there at 4618. A little bit of volatility last night coming into the close. You talk about an acceleration, man, up to 4617. 
And just like that, we're trading back right near those lows of yesterday afternoon. We'll see if we can hold it as we get negative price. The Dow actually climbs back in positive territory in the open. Check out that acceleration. Even since I came on the air, right, Dow was off almost 100 points when I started talking. Man, you're positive by 10 right now with the Russell reversing in negative territory. Russell off by 8 tenths percent as the Dow catches a little bit of a bid. We jump over to the dollar index right now, DXY. Just off the highs, 102.25. That's putting a hurting on some of the commodities out there. Gold contract off $24 at 1985, somewhat back to the lows we had towards the end of last week in the gold contract. All right, jumping around to some of the other equities. Uh, the story yesterday, right out there with Kevin Meyer and another executive being brought back. So it'd be interesting here. They had talked to, and I remember even Kevin Meyer. I wonder if they want to bring back these guys. So it was talked about that they're bringing these guys back as consultants, right? How to write the ship, maybe even to talk about what to do with the SBN, how to manage that content. Uh, both of them, execs at Disney, passed over for Chappick. And they run, I believe it's Candle Media, a uh, company. They own Moonbug. They own some children's properties. They own Coco Melon. They own uh, Blippi. They own some other ones as well. Wildly successful kids' characters. They've merchandised all of that. Uh, they've sold the rights to that to Netflix, to different companies. And I remember that Meyer was talking about, I believe, even himself going back. And I saw an interview a while back, and this guy's always fascinated me because he was kind of at the helm at Disney Plus when they started it, right? Putting that together. And they ended up going with the Parks guy, Chappick, right? Versus going for even maybe Meyer. He jumped ship and became the CEO of TikTok. That turned into a political football that really wasn't what he imagined. Their company, Candle Media, I think it's backed by Blackstone, BlackRock. Um, nonetheless, if he was going to be CEO of Disney, I think one of the only ways that happens is that if Disney potentially buys the company that he has, that he runs right now. And so it would be interesting to see if that even comes out. And if it does, that would be a bonus for Disney. I'm telling you, folks, some of these brands, there's nothing like Disney. But it is amazing how kids in my house, and I've seen them everywhere, flock to some of these brands they've had. And boy, they've picked up some of the best brands out there on YouTube. And I tell you, folks, just like adults, okay, there's outstanding programming out there on YouTube. That's where like this whole podcast deal is blowing up, right? There's just free content everywhere that people like in the form of podcasts, in the form of YouTube shows. Kids are the same exact way, man. They don't need NBC or CBS or ABC or Fox to produce them something spectacular when there are so many creators out there that are producing content that they enjoy even more so. That's, you know, whether it's YouTube, I mean, TFNN is on YouTube. If you're out there listening, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're probably listening on YouTube or you're in a tiger stand or you've listened on YouTube at some point in the past. Uh, yeah, point being. So, Disney, you're at 88 bucks, man, long term. Now, you really want to go long term on this, okay? Where my brain goes, you got some big pullbacks. You're basically at the COVID lows, which is remarkable. Technically, you got to like that you got your back against the wall, man. You know, you're basically back at COVID lows. You're right back where you started the year at after being at 86, up to 120. You're backing off to 88. You got Iger back in there. You got Kevin Meyer back in there now. I better learn how to pronounce his name and make sure I'm saying it correctly. Uh, the next part of that conversation, right, is where are their movies, okay? Now, just recently in June, I think it was, last month? Yeah, June. And so this is Iger. This is part of the reorganization, okay? They reorganized a huge swath of their release dates. Now, the only thing I'll say here is they are subject to the Hollywood strike. And if this becomes a big problem, all of these dates are moot. It doesn't even matter because they're all getting pushed back, okay? So consider that for what it's worth. But... Where my brain went to immediately, now this is some of the revisions, okay, as in you had Captain America, was going to be May of next year, You know they're now pushing that back to July 26th, okay, they got an Alien movie coming out next year, this is all Disney releases, and these are the changes that they made last year, so we're going a little big picture, you got the markets at 4600 man, okay, you want to be invested, it's important to find some sound companies, Disney has been an underperformer for some time now, but you see the problem when you buy overperformers like Uber going into earnings, and they crushed it. Uber crushed it, okay? And they're flat to lower this morning. Even with the freight miss, okay, they crushed it for sure. First quarter, they're profitable, all that, but it's baked in. 
you might have to go out a couple of years, all right? Where you want to be, here's my opinion, where you want to be right now on this timetable for Disney, so maybe you don't have to buy them just yet. Maybe you look for it to find a bid before you get into it, okay? Get in there when you got some Star Wars movies, man. The last time I think Star Wars came out was like 2019. Do you know that? 2019 was the last time a Star Wars came out, okay? And you got Deadpool in 2004, you got a Blade movie. You got a Fantastic Four movie comes out May of 2025. Avatar 3 is going to be at the end of 2025. That's potentially a big one there. And then what do you got, man? You got Star Wars, May of 2026. You got another Star Wars, December of 2026. So in the span of 12 months, from December 2025 to December 2026, you're going to get the next installment of Avatar, and you're going to get two Star Wars movies, and we haven't seen one since 2019. That's going to be quite a run for Disney, man, when they put it together. Um, yeah, we got – what is – yeah, this Captain America, middle of 2024. They got a Fantastic Four movie, middle of 2025. But you can see Deadpool 3, that should probably be a big one, middle of 2024. So what are going to be the big ones next year? Captain America, Deadpool 3. That's that's all that jumps out, man, to me. Versus you go to Avatar 3, right? You got an Avengers movie in 2026. You got two Star Wars movies in 2026. You got another Avengers movie in the beginning of 2027. And then they even got Avatar 4 and 5 slated for 2029, 2031. But that's an area that they're going to crush at the box office, man. There's nothing like Disney. There's nothing like Star Wars. And they got two films slated for the same year when you really haven't had a Star Wars in forever. And that's probably one of their biggest franchises when you think about the ability to put out a box office film that can crush a billion dollars at the box office. You know what I'll try and find right now, too? Uh, let me see. In 2019, check this out. Okay. Look at these articles, man. In 2019, this is just cherry-picking a, a Google, okay? This is an end of 2019 article written about the fact that Disney banked $13 billion in the box office in 2019. How'd they do that? Well, they had a Star Wars towards the end of the year, okay? They had an Avengers. Look at They had Lion King, Captain Marvel, Toy Story 4, 4 Frozen 2. Yeah, so this is what they have the potential to do. $7 billion movies is what Disney had that year in 2019. I'm not sure they'll hit seven again, but for some context towards the end of 2019, folks, on Disney shares, okay, that was their run. It was a perfect combination of everything. The shot, stock shot up to 152. That was their big banner year. They also announced the plans for Disney Plus, right? You were trading at 112 before they even announced those plans. You trade up to 203. We're at 89 bucks. So keep those on your calendar as we took a little deep dive on Disney. We'll take a look at some of the other companies with their numbers already. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. 
The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart here of Amazon. Amazon pulling back a bit. We're off about half a percent. We jump over to the S&Ps right now, off about 12 percent. Interesting article over here from Bloomberg talking about that the FAA approves the largest uncrewed aircraft system in the U.S. This is what I talk about, man. You start going out a year, two years, three years, just go out to where Tommy's going to be 16 years old, man. Uh, the year 2037, what's it going to be like? Okay, because in the year 2023, we're going to have basically planes flying around that are uncrewed drones. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Landon, who's six, and Tommy, who's two, of course, the other day, and saying... I was explaining that, you know, they're probably going to have self-driving. He's saying he was saying they're going to have self-driving cars. I said, man, they're probably going to have self-driving planes by the time you're 20 years old. 15 years from now, they're probably going to have self-driving planes. And those planes are probably just going to be drones. We have a drone, right? We fly the drone around in the backyard. All they got to do is make the technology a little bit bigger, a little bit more reliable, a little bit safer, put some people in there, and you got self-driving drones all over the world okay but nonetheless they got it done in terms of this company an electric aircraft startup received approval from the faa to operate its uncrewed zero emissions so there's zero emissions with no driver no pilot at all and it's a commercial vehicle the aircraft called pelican spray it's highly automated it's 1100 pounds it's a crop sprayer Okay, it would make sense. This is where you come in first, right? You're not putting people up there just yet. You're not even flying long destinations over long places. You're flying over fields. You're spraying some crops. Um, they currently lease their battery-operated aircraft to agricultural and crop spraying companies in Costa Rica, Honduras, and Brazil. They spray pesticides and fungicides for crops like bananas, cotton, soy, and corn. With FAA approval in place, it plans expanding to farms in the U.S. Getting FAA authorization for a passenger aircraft is a long and difficult process and a significant hurdle for the electric aviation industry. The main challenge to electrifying commercial passenger aviation, though, is the limitations of battery technology that make it infeasible to fly any meaningful distance from with multiple passengers on board. For context, this small uncrewed crop sprayer needs to land every 15 minutes anyway to refill their chemical tanks, which is also when their batteries are swapped. Yeah, they carry up to 540 pounds of liquid. Uh, pretty cool though, right? So think about it, we got drone vehicles, they're gonna be up there spraying all the crops, zero emissions in there as well. It's an electric vehicle. And you got to say, where does the elect, where do all the batteries come from? How do you say zero emissions? It's zero emission because it's an electric vehicle. Uh, yeah, interesting nonetheless, man. The future is a wild thing. Uh, despite the current challenges, 20 years from now, in which electric aircrafts run regional short haul flights, 
and those powered fleets operate long haul flights. The world is coming, man. Get ready for it. All right, what else do we got up here? Let's see. Yeah, we talk a little bit of heat. Let's talk a little bit of Pfizer. Out with their numbers, beat on earnings, but revenue misses. COVID product sales plummet. Shouldn't be surprising there. They pivot away from that COVID vaccine and COVID antiviral drug Plax Paxlovid while the world emerges from the pandemic. Yeah, so we jump over to Pfizer numbers. They were pretty much unchanged on their numbers as Uber has actually pulled back. Yeah, Pfizer down about a half a percent on their numbers. It's been quite a pullback for them, though. We pull up the weekly. Yeah, check it out, right? From this year, 52 bucks to 36, quite the rise to $61. Yeah, those vaccines becoming available, what, beginning of, two, 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 yeah, beginning of 2021, end of 2020, something like that. Quite a historic run, and then they give it all back, man, up to 36 bucks on Pfizer. And we do jump back to Uber. Yeah, look at it, give it up, up through, off almost 4%, man. There's a 10 minute chart. We open and we trade lower by two bucks, continuing to trade lower. As I mentioned, strong numbers on Uber, but they were worried about the freight part of their business for sure. And I wonder if uh, anyone's worried about that food delivery business as well, if things really get cramped in the economy. All right, we got some volatility in the markets. We jump over to the VIX right now. VIX actually pairing that volatility on the open, but we got a 14 handle at 1401 as the market's trading a little bit lower. And folks, tomorrow, a big day at TFNN. We got our man Larry Pesavento. He's got his live trading event tomorrow. You can still sign up, folks. Now, please, I encourage you, if you're thinking of going, head on over, sign up right now. You gain access to the newsletter that Larry puts out, Fibonacci 24-7. You get that for a month. That's a $97 value. The cost is $295. That gets you in for the five hours of live trading. It will be archived. You can go over those five hours however many times you want. The whole archive will be available on your TFNN account member page for those that sign up. Larry does two or three of these a year. Last one he did was in March. Uh, not sure he's going to have one through the end of the year. We'll see, but he does about two or three a year, so check it out. Should be a good event. Uh, always a good time. I try and check it out myself. I'll be doing my show at 9 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. But Larry will be in there live trading, kicking things off at 9. And the reason why he does it this way, folks, is because – he doesn't trade the final two hours of the trading day. He's looking for action. Those are the hours he focuses on, especially right out of the gate early in the morning. That's why he's in there 30 minutes prior to the open at 9 in the morning. Uh, check it out. Larry Pesavento. Tomorrow, 9 till 2, five hours live trading. Should be a good event. And, uh, yeah, don't wait till tomorrow morning to sign up, folks, because we got to get you in the Discord room. It's a great way to do these presentations uh, we already have a lot of great signups there's going to be a lot of great traders in that room i'm sure and don't wait until the last second though because we got to get you in the room it only takes about five minutes but if we get a bunch of people signing up at nine in the morning tomorrow it's going to take us a few minutes you don't want to miss a minute of it so don't wait check it out sign up we'll get you in that room today you'll be all set for mr pesavento uh tomorrow 23 hours 23 hours and 12 minutes from right now there you go uh kicking things off larry pesavento all right what else we got going on we talked about planes yeah, we talk a little bit of Wall Street. Why not? Some of the projections changing, some of uh, the analysts racing to catch up. Strategists scramble to catch up as the S&P 500 rally rumbles on. You get Oppenheimer raising their year-end target to 4,900. We talked about Morgan Stanley's Wilson yesterday uh, admitting some of his losses, repenting a bit, uh, sounding a little less bearish yesterday than he has been for some time. Can't deny how wrong you've been when this market has just plowed higher. Bullish targets, they just talk about. People are updating everywhere, man. You got 4,900 at Oppenheimer. You got 4,825 at Fundstrack. Credit Suisse at 4,700. The average, though, still still sitting at 4,245. What are we pushing right now? Almost 4,600 in the market. This at a time that we have yields continuing to rise, right, with the 10-year back above 4% right now. And, you know, I talked about this yesterday. We're coming into school, man. Some schools starting this coming Monday. Some schools starting this coming Wednesday, August 9th, that means you got orientation kicking off either Friday or Monday potentially. That means everybody's kind of doing their back to school shopping in Florida last week, this week. You probably already have it done. We already have it done in our house. Remarkable. Summer's over. We're back to school. How that's going to change things? The Northeast has got about a month longer. Uh, kids get out a month earlier down here, folks. So they just shift that summer forward. We were talking about it in the den yesterday. Uh, they had some, some, 
Some good guesses at maybe why that's the case. All of them outdated, though. So interesting that doesn't get changed, right? Kids go back to school at the beginning of August here. Nobody really knows why. They're all trying to figure out why that might be the case from years past. Maybe it's because nobody had air conditioning, right? Maybe it's because of this reason and that. Nonetheless, uh, kids going back to school in Florida, man. Uh, in Massachusetts, yeah, you probably got another month, right? When's Labor Day? I believe September 4th this year. Uh, September 4th which is almost five weeks away. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't forget about Larry. Head on over to the front page at TFNN.com. Check out Larry's course. Sign up for it. We'll be back for one more segment. Don't TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. Year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well so it's always at your reach to sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We jump over to Ford. We got a bid in Ford right now. You're up by eight tenths percent. Saw the article jumping over here. You got Ford. They're going to restart that F-150 Lightning production. Demand jumped sixfold after they cut their prices in July. Uh, the battle is on in EVs, man. I was also reading an article, I think, on the program recently, right, talking about that larger EVs are coming to market. The biggest SUV. Yeah, I was talking about it because myself, I'm looking potentially for a three-row vehicle. Uh, and that's what they were talking about in electric vehicles. They're coming with big vehicles, man, which Americans love. The only big three-row SUV that's been on the market for electric vehicles has been a Mercedes at 105000 That's about to change in the next year, and the price war is going to be on, I'm sure, as they try and get into market for the Ford F-150. 
And markets, we get the Dow catching a bit beyond that. s and is right now negative by 10. You jump back to Uber shares, down about 4% on their numbers for Uber shares. And uh, yeah, finishing up the conversation. I've been talking about those student loans. It's interesting, so many articles popping up that basically say the same thing. I saw this one on Bloomberg this morning. And I said, uh, is that the old article? Is that the article I've read before? No, this is just another article out this morning by one writer, Janet Lauren, talking about same ex Exact deal, man. 28 million borrowers will soon need to restart payments. They put it in some interesting perspective, though, in terms of how much money this actually is. You're talking about 28 million borrowers. That's all going to begin October 1st. Many borrowers were assigned new loan servicers. Some of the biggest companies out there quit the federal program when nobody was paying, probably. Then you had the whole failed attempt to forgive that debt that went to the Supreme Court, right? You got people in there who don't even say, they don't even know what servicer is providing their loan anymore. And then they compare it to the size of the bank. $1.64 trillion in outstanding federal loans. 90% of the borrowers saw their payments paused. So that's $1.5 trillion of debt that's been paused. Okay, That would rank as the fifth biggest bank in assets in the country. So imagine that. You get the fifth biggest bank in the country. They've paused. $1.5 trillion of loans for three years, and it's all starting back. That's going to matter, man. So keep that one on your radar, and that begins October 1st. So I say maybe the end of the year, maybe holiday season, a little tight as we go forward. Thanks for starting the day off, folks. Don't forget about Larry. He's starting tomorrow, but stay tuned, our man.